I mean, always aiming for gold. You know, I think that's every athlete's desire. Um, but yeah, I think that doesn't come unless I stay healthy. So I think that's number one on my list, really, truly, is staying healthy. Um, what she and then, said, of course, you all already know that. Each and every athlete wants the gold, but health is as important, whether it be physical or mental. For Sydney, even if she's among the top names in track and field, her focus remains the same. Um, and then, of course, trying to be the best that I can be, trying to improve upon myself and, you know, go for gold if, if, if it comes, God willing. That's amazing. If not, I just want to continue to be the best I can be and represent Team USA. As well. This year, when athletes say they want gold, it's pretty obvious where they want to get it, at the Summer Olympics in Paris. Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone is no exception, although she already won two gold medals in the only Olympics she has competed in. She finished in the top spot in the 400-meter hurdles and 4x400-meter relay at the delayed 2020 Tokyo Olympics. At this year's Summer Olympics, she aims to snatch up the gold in her specialty event. Yes, that's right. She intends to defend her title in the 400-meter hurdles at the Paris Olympics and was scratched from the 200 and 400-meter flat races that she had originally signed up for. Just so you know, the world record holder had initially been entered in all three races for the U.S. Olympic trials. But as of a few days ago, she was listed as a scratch in the 200 and 400. The Olympian confirmed that she will narrow her Olympic focus to what she called her first love at a recent media gathering in Los Angeles to roll out Michael Johnson's new track league. Oh, about that retired American sprinter Michael Johnson, who won four Olympic gold medals and eight World Championships gold medals, officially launched his new track venture, Grand Slam Track. Team USA Great has secured more than $30 million in financial commitments from investors and strategic partners to launch the league, which is scheduled to start in 2025. Notably, Sydney is a marquee first commitment for Johnson ahead of her participation in this summer's games. For her part, Sydney is delighted with this development. I'm honored to be one of the first racers in Grand Slam track, she said. She explained that the retired sprinter's vision is clear and that he's exactly the leader this sport needs to break new ground. I am thrilled to be a part of this league and look forward to everything we have coming in the future, she added further stating that the league is the step forward that the track needs to take it to another level. The meetings will feature track races only, divided into categories of short sprints, long sprints, high hurdles, low hurdles, middle distance, and long distance. Of course, there will be men's and women's races in each category. According to Johnson, the new track league will see the best of the best compete against each other at four elite meetings every year from 2025. It is set to debut in April of 2025, with two three-day meetings in the United States and two international stops, with prize money of around $3 million on offer at each meeting. A total of 12.6 million USD in prize money will be up for grabs across the four events. In addition to base pay and appearance fees, the athlete with the best combined results from the two events in which they are taking part will receive 100,000 USD and the second placed finisher 50,000 USD with the eighth placed finisher taking home $10,000. At the end of the day, you know, these athletes deserve to be compensated for their talent and for what they bring and we're doing that, Johnson said. In an interview, he basically sang Sydney's praises. She's one of those athletes that likes to race on the big stage. She loves it, he said. So when I presented this to her, telling her she would get that same sort of vibe, audience, and grand scale four times a year, she was all about it. Talking about the circuit, Sydney said, it's going to elevate the platforms of the athletes that compete more than once every four years and just give opportunities for athletes to be compensated for the hard work we put in. Anyway, Going back to the announcement she made at the event launch, although the 24-year-old has raced in five different events, the 100 and 400 hurdles, the 200 and 400 flat, and the 4x100 relay, she will only be competing in the 400-meter hurdles at the Paris Olympics. I think we kind of just knew we wanted to come back to the hurdles, she told the Associated Press. 
Last year was fun trying the 400 and kind of dabbling in that. And you know, in the future, we might come back to that as well. But I think this is kind of just our focus right now. Seeing that she easily cruised to victory in her first 400 meter hurdles race for nearly two years shows that she has indeed been focusing on her specialty event. No one can say otherwise, especially since she ran almost effortlessly and left the rest of the field trailing in her wake at the Edwin Moses Classic at Morehouse College in a world-leading 52.7 seconds. Sydney McLaughlin Lervoni is back in a big way. The crowd at their feet. They're seeing a world record holder live in person. Her first 400 hurdle since August of 2022. It's going to be quick. The world record holder is here. Well, it was a world lead time until Femke Bull ran 52.49 in Roma. But then again, when Sydney ran a world lead in May, it was her first 400 meter hurdles race after more than a year. So it's probably safe to say that she is indeed shaping up to defend her title in Paris. She did, however, compete in another 400 meter flat at a windy USATF New York City Grand Prix. There, she ran the third fastest 400 meter in American history as she continued to prepare for the Olympic trials. She won in 48.75 seconds, which is notably five hundredths off Sonia Richards Ross's American record from 2006. Mind you, McLaughlin Lavrone also ran 48.74 last July. After the race, she admitted that she hoped to break the American record. Just wanted to get out there, get a race under me, she told Lewis Johnson on NBC Sports. The wind was a little interesting on the backstretch, but I'm happy with the time. It wasn't exactly what we were hoping for, but sometimes you just gotta feel the race, so I'll take that. Still, it was a great race. She rounded the corner before the final straight away at Icon Stadium in New York. She'd blown through the stagger of the 400 meter and ended any hope for the other seven runners in the field. The fact that McLaughlin Lavrone could so casually drop a sub-49 is amazing. It may well possibly be Sydney's only 400-meter dash this year, but her time would still be placed as a top-10 all-time performance, finishing just slightly ahead of Mariletti Paulino's 48.76. Needless to say, the two-time Olympian has mastered the art of the game face. Standing behind the starting blocks of the 400-meter hurdles, she wears a stoic expression, while her competitors smile into the camera or wave at the crowd as the stadium announcer bellows their names. Sydney stares straight ahead, unflinching. She is all business because of this. Some may find it surprising that one of the world's fastest women's preferred pastimes is rest and relaxation. Being a disciplined athlete, on top of her other admirable qualities, Sydney knows how necessary a good night's sleep is for performance. Although she admitted that it hadn't always been that way, Sydney has had to overcome many hurdles, both literal and figurative, over the course of her nearly decade-long career to attain that deep awareness and understanding of what her body and soul need in order to thrive. Now, when I step on the line, I'm not running to prove a point she said in an interview. I'm not running to validate myself, and I'm not running to glorify myself. The um, and I love this sport, but like I've said before, this sport is not everything to right. me. It's right. what I do, it's not who I am. So uh, I wanna do it well, the best that I can, for as long as I can, and when we decide to make a shift, we'll make a shift, but yeah, I, um, I have other aspirations in life. Right. The athlete also is not adverse to change. In fact, she recently wrote and released a book in her words. I think honestly, like as opportunities arise, I just want to do them the best that I can. Speaking uh, of opportunities, she'll have that at the upcoming US trials, just like this athlete does. See for yourself 